If you want to get into farming and breeding hens, you'll need to first get eggs. To get the eggs, you need to visit Haldor in the Black Forest. But you'll see here that eggs are not unlocked by default. You have to first kill Yagluth in your game. Once you have killed Yagluth and you revisit Haldor, you'll see that the egg shows up here and can be bought for 1,500 gold. You would of course need two of these so that you can get two hens from them and these hens can then be bred. Once you have your two eggs, you need to build a safe, protected and warm area for each of them. You then go ahead and separate them so that they're just one at a time, you throw them down into this warm and protected area. At first the eggs will say they are too cold, but if you wait a while they should then say they're warm enough and that's when you know that they will eventually hatch. You can see here that by being near a fire is not enough as this egg right here is too cold, whereas this one right here is warm enough. The difference between the two is the fact that we have extra walls around this other one and that prevents the air from getting in and cooling it down. So now that we have the walls around this one as well, each egg is now warm. So when these eggs are warm, all we have to do at this stage is wait. And eventually they will spawn into two little chickens right here. Over time, the chickens will grow up into hens, which can be petted and also renamed if you want to. Now, the hens will eat a wide variety of different seeds in the game. So, for example, here I'm just chucking in some carrot seeds and they'll also eat dandelions. Once they start to eat, they'll get the hearts in game that all the animals get when they're about to breed and eventually they will lay eggs. As such, you do need to make sure their entire enclosure is going to be warm enough for those eggs when they do eventually get laid on the floor. So, chicken breeding will give you chicken meat as well as eggs and, of course, feathers. And all these have different uses in the game. The feathers can be particularly useful when you use the them at the Galda table because they can be used to make the new feather cape. I'm giving away free copies of Valheim to my subscribers, plus I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and then I'd get one of these, which would really mean the world to me. So please do consider subscribing. Right now I'm in the Mistlands and as you can see, visibility is not that great. So the first item you're going to use to change this will be the Wisp Light. And as you can see, once equipped, the mist around us has cleared and we have a radius around us that we can now see. This is the Wisp Fountain and you'll need to make one of these in order to get the Wisp that is used to make the Wisp Light that we just saw. As you can see, it will tell you that it demands darkness. So you need to come back here at night time and then wait for wisps to just turn up. And there we go. There's a wisp there, a little blue wisp that is going to be attracted to this fountain. It will fly in towards it and then hover around it. At that stage, just go ahead and press E on it to pick it up. And that is used along with one silver to make the wisp light. This can be done at any workbench level one or higher. Do note that you can equip the wisp light with the mega Yord. So if I try to equip this right now, my wisp light will go out. So when you're in mistlands, you will need to choose one or the other. There is a new best pickaxe in the game and it is the black metal pickaxe. As you can see here, it can be made at a level 2 forge and all you need is 25 black metal and 3 Yggdrasil wood. And it will be a huge help to getting a lot more resources on your Mistlands journey. It's also recommended that you take some stamina mead as well as some health mead with you to Mistlands as well as your best possible health food and two stamina foods. Stamina should be prioritized as the Mistlands terrain does take a lot of running around. On top of that, there's a lot of cliffs and hills and things you'll be jumping up and you'll be running to and from a lot of different mobs. So stamina is going to be quite important. And to that end, you can make sure you are fully rested before you go to the Mistlands biome. You should make sure you take the Dragafang bow with you, and the best arrows to take are, of course, the needle. But if you don't have that and you want to take either the iron, the fire, or the poison, these can be good alternatives. But you definitely want to take a bow with you. Now, in terms of the armor, for your first run to the Mistlands, you probably just want to go with the best armor you can get, which would, of course, be the padded armor that is fully upgraded. This will give you, obviously, the most protection and allow you to hopefully establish a camp with a portal back to your main base and that way if you die you can at least get back to the Mistlands quickly. However once you're at that point and then you start to explore the Mistlands I actually recommend the Fenris armor. The reason for this is you do get the extra speed and you also have resistance against fire which will be useful for some of the Mistlands mobs. And you can take any cape with you it will all give you the same protection and you don't need to worry about like frost damage or anything like that. What you do want to do is use the feather cape as soon as you get there but you'll need some Mistlands items before you can use that. Another good thing about wandering around in the Fenris armor is you'll be able to explore quickly as I said, but then if you do happen to die, your backup armor will be your padded armor, and then you'll be going back to your grave a bit more armored and a bit more likely to survive. When you first venture to Mistlands, it's a good idea to have a look around at what other biomes are nearby. So for example, we have the Mistlands biome here on the left, but a Black Forest biome right next to it. You can then set your little base up in the Black Forest, which is obviously much safer, and that way you have a portal to get back if you die. On top of that, you can then portal home. Obviously, you need to set a portal up before you come and name it whatever, then portal home and like rest up sleep, have some food, and then you're ready to start your Mistlands adventure fresh in the morning. Obviously, be sure to mark where this is on the map, because then we're going to run off into the Mistlands biome and do some exploring. For your first venture into the Mistlands biome, it can also be a good idea to sort of hug the boundary line between the two different borders, and that way, if Mistlands is getting a bit crazy, you can escape to a safer biome. Now, before you venture into the actual Mistlands biome itself, it can be an idea to go into your settings and into the audio and turn the music volume way down and possibly the effect volume way up. Just make sure it's very loud in your headset or however 
of you're listening to it. What this does is it ensures that you'll actually be able to hear mobs and recognize they're nearby before they notice that you're nearby, and that can be a big advantage in keeping you alive. Also, be sure to take enough materials with you that you can actually make campfires as you're going through the Mistlands biome. I'm going to show you a number of places that you can rest in the Mistlands biome, and then obviously get your rested buff back as you go. When going through the Mistlands biome, it's important to mark literally everything you see. So for example, this ancient route right here, I want to mark this. So I'm going to put a little dot down and just AR for ancient route. You want to do this quickly so you're not spending loads of time on the map when mobs could attack you and you're not aware. I recommend that you take with you a black metal sword and a frostener, and for the shield, I prefer the black metal shield so that I can parry. Obviously upgrade all of these as much as you can before you go in. And if you want a full mob and combat guide for Mistlands, there is one on my channel. Now talking about interesting places you can rest in Mistlands, you'll see that right here I actually have shelter. So if I were to just place a campfire nearby right now, then I'm actually resting and I'm going to be able to regen my rested bonus just by being stood under this tree. Be sure to pick up mage caps and also Jotun puffs as you go through as they will be useful to you later on. You can find things like ancient swords and shields and it will show up when you look at them in game like this. If you go ahead and use your pickaxe to break these, you'll see that you can actually get some materials from them. And if you mine them out from the bottom first and get rid of all the pieces of the sword, in this case that is touching the ground, eventually it will all crumble under its own weight. And there we go, it's all crumbling, and we got ourselves a load of scrap iron from this. You'll see structures like this in the game, and they can look different. Sometimes they'll have doors on the front, sometimes when you go in there'll be Diverga in here, sometimes there'll be Seekers, and sometimes there'll be nothing. So do be careful going into them, but they can be another good place that you can find shelter if you are in a covered area. And sometimes the covered area can be as simple as just going under the stairs. So we could just sit under the stairs here in order to get our rested buff. Now if you should get very lucky and stumble across a location like this, which when you run up has this that you see right right here, this is actually the new boss location, so definitely mark this on your map. The new hair in the game will run away from you when you trigger them, I'm in ghost mode just so I can show you them for this tutorial, but when you do see them you definitely want to try to kill them. You'll find most weapons that you're going to take with you to miss lands by the time you're at that stage of the game will be a one hit kill for these hair, and of course you could also shoot them with your bow. But the drops that they give you are useful for a number of different recipes in the game, so you definitely want to kill them and make the effort to do so when you see them. And here are the Jotun puffs we were talking about before, so that's what they look like and they can just be picked up and should be. And just over here, we have ancient armor, which is in the form of like a broken shield. And again, if we were to mine this, we'd get a lot of scrap iron from it. When you see trees like this, kind of like giant bonsai sort of trees, if we stand here and you can sort of see them, they'll grow all over the Mistlands area. And if we get up close and look at it, you'll see it says there it's an Yggdrasil shoot. So you want to go ahead and chop these down, as this is how you get the Yggdrasil wood. And sometimes they can be found in much smaller variations like this one right here. So don't discount these, they're still worth chopping down for that extra wood. There are a number of new emotes in the game, and if you press the enter key, you'll see all the different different emotes there and you just type in the emote you want to do so forward slash and then the emote so if you type in slash dance then you do this absolutely awesome dance you'll notice we have two ravens right here and one of them is munin so there is now munin in the game as well as hujin and munin will give you obviously different tips to what the hujin will give you and if you press the tab key and go up to the valheim compendium up here then you can see what a munin tip is versus what the hujin tips are now this is one of these dungeon areas that has the dwergers as well as the door and you'll notice here that the different mobs here are all attacking the dwerger who are also fighting back. So if you get in trouble against some mobs and you know one of these are nearby because you've been marking them on your mini map, you can simply run to them and let them fight it out a bit. And this is also a good way of injuring the Dvergler before you take them down because they can be difficult to kill. However, once you have killed them all, you can come inside here and take out this ward. The reason we'd want to do that is because we can then turn this into our base if we want. And these awesome new doors can then be opened and closed at this point, which is absolutely awesome. So from here, you've got your front door. And at this point, you can go ahead and repair this building or even just take things down. You'll find that if you place the stone cutter down inside here, you'll be able to repair many things, including these awesome new doors and all of the black marble pieces you see around the place. Another thing you can do with these structures is go ahead and place down a stone cutter somewhere nearby and then just start taking them out. And of course, if you take them out from the bottom first, they will start to collapse under their own weight. This can be a fast way to get yourself a lot of black marble. Do look out for petrified bone in the game, and these right here are in the shape of a rib cage. And if there's a rib cage, it means there is a skull nearby. Now, I have to say, I've never seen the rib cage vertical like this it's always been horizontal for me in the game and then the skull has been at the end of that horizontal structure so this is new to me what i will say is by taking out this petrified bone you can get yourself more black marble but the skull is more important and i'll show you why that is in a second but as i've never seen one of the structures like this i thought i'd show you this in this video sometimes with these structures as well if you go ahead and go inside and go down the stairs you'll find the entrance to the new dungeons the infested mines so right down at the bottom here we could enter into there and we would be then entering into the dungeon this right here is a 
another type of Dwerger camp that you can find in the game. It has all the useful things, like for example, this Dwerger component crate, which I'll come on to in a second. Do make sure you check thoroughly, because sometimes these crates can spawn up on top of these things, like where I'm stood now. And if you're down here, you might miss it if you're not looking carefully. Now, again, as soon as we attack these guys, or we try to steal their crate, because the only way to get into the Dwerger crate is to actually smash it open using a weapon, all of the Dwerger are then going to start attacking us. So if I take myself out of ghost mode and smash this, you'll see these guys are about to be very annoyed at me, and all of them will attack at once. These guys do a great deal of damage. You can see here they're damaging a lot of the structures around, and they'll do a lot of damage to you, of course, as well. So do make sure you're heavily geared before you try to take these areas down, but they are useful for the Dwerger component crates, which will give you this item right here, the Dwerger extractor. And this is used in the sap extractor recipe. Again, there is a sap farming tutorial on my channel if you want the full info. Another useful thing about these particular camps is they have this petrified bone right here. So you'll be able to mine this area and harvest it all and all that sort of stuff, but you will have to first of all destroy the ward. So make sure you do that first. Once you've done that, you can mine into this petrified bone right here and it will get you some black marble. Also, if you mine into the petrified bone in here, you'll see there is a lot of soft tissue. So this can net you a lot of soft tissue. So this is the more traditional petrified bone that I'm used to seeing, the rib cage here being horizontal. And if we go over to here, you'll see there is a skull. And these skulls are going to be very useful to us, especially early on into our Mistlands adventure. And I'll show you why in just a second if I can get to a little spot here and just start mining inside the skull. So here's why, guys. There's a lot of soft tissue inside these skulls, basically where the brain would be. And that's going to be our best way of getting soft tissue early on into our Mistlands adventure. When you do dig one of these out, be sure to dig underground as well and check for that. As I have found in several of the skulls that I've dug out, there was a wealth of soft tissue and also petrified bone underneath the ground. Now, if you make up a stone cutter and also a forge, then when you find one of these structures right here, you'll be able to get all of this black marble stuff by just destroying it. But also these right here, the iron cage things, you can destroy those to get yourself a lot of iron. Now, realistically, you can actually get all of this stuff just with a stone cutter if we come down to the bottom right here and just take out all the bottom foundational pieces. Of course, when we do that, everything above will crumble and this will get us a ton of black marble and also a ton of iron very quickly. So we talked about the Dwergo extractor earlier and how to get that as well as the Yggdrasil wood. And you can see that when you combine that with some black metal and have a workbench nearby, you can place a sap extractor. So you want to place this on the glowing Yggdrasil roots right here. And it says here the root is pulsating with energy. So that's how you know you're in the right spot. And then over time, you'll see here, this will extract sap from here and you will get sap that way. And you can place several of these down on a single root. After doing this for a while, you'll see you get this message comes up saying that the ancient root is all dried up and this sort of magical glow there will go away as well. So at that point, you can extract all your sap and take these down and move on to another root. Be sure to mark this location though, because if you give it some time, the root that dried up will eventually have sap in it again and can be reharvested. So you can just sort of go around to a few different roots in the Mistlands biome and just take turns harvesting them like one at a time and then moving on to the next one and keep doing that in a circle. There are two new Mistlands events. This one right here, What's Up Yarl, as you see there, and you will get, I believe, up to two Yarl that come and try to attack you. They will actually actively seek you out when you're in the Mistlands. So during this event, be sure to look to the skies and keep an eye out for the Yowl. I'm going to go over the best way to fight them in just a second by exposing their weak spot. The other event that you can get is this one right here. They sort you out. This is the Seeker event. And again, Seekers will then come and, well, seek you out and they will come and attack you. So during this event, you might want to get to some high ground and then you can sort of shoot down at them with your bow or you might just want to run away and get to a different bio. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty difficult event to face. Now we talked about mobs having weak spots and for the Yowl, it's their underbelly right here. So when you're in the Mistlands bio, and you're shooting at these guys, you want to try and aim for that orangey underbelly bit right there. If you get this right, you'll see the damage there. It uh, comes up in yellow and will do more damage to them. So that's the best way to fight against them. These Seeker Soldiers or Seeker Brutes also have a weak point and it is their butt. You want to try and get behind them and hit them in the butt. And that's why parrying them can be quite useful. You see here, if I shoot this guy in the butt, the damage done will be in yellow. And that's because it's extra damage because we hit the weak spot. Trolls also have a weak spot, which is their head. So if you're fighting a troll, obviously this isn't Mistlands related, but thought be worth mentioning, shoot them in the head. Now these ticks are dropped by Yao and can also be found in dungeons and things like that in the Mistlands biome. You'll see they'll attach themselves to you and when they do, you want to dodge roll to try and get rid of them. However, this doesn't work 100% of the time. Sometimes when you dodge roll, they will still be on you, but that is the way to at least try to get rid of them. Now, if ticks attach to the front of you, you can actually just hit them and you see there we can actually damage them even when they're on us. However, if they are attached to the back of you, then you will not be able to do this. If a tick were to attach to the back of you, you can use an area of effect weapon like a hammer to hit on the floor and you'll see it does do some damage to the tick that's on the back of you. Under the furniture tab you can make wisp lights using one wisp and one Yggdrasil wood and when you place these down they'll actually clear the mist around them so if you want to make a base in the mistlands or a road or something like that then placing several of these down is a good idea. Do be careful though because the mistlands mobs will attack these so you might need to sort of protect them 
them a little bit or replace them over time. In terms of protecting them, it's a bit the same as if you were building a black forest base and you're trying to protect it from trolls. You need to build walls and stake walls and things like that. To that end, we do now have the Dwerger Sharp Stakes. You can see here, this is a new stake wall and this is a useful way of protecting yourself in Mistlands or just your base in general. On top of that, you can place down traps. And if we go and arm the trap, this will actually hurt you as well as other mobs, so do be careful. But if a mob or yourself walks over it, then this happens, doing massive damage. If you cultivate some land in the Mistlands biome, you can actually grow the two new mushrooms, which are the Mage Caps and the Yotam Puffs. Further to that, you can also grow turnips in Mistlands, but those are the only three crops you can grow here. You will need to protect them as the Mistlands mobs will come and try to attack any crops you plant here. So if you have the new Mage Caps or Yotam Puffs in your inventory and you equip your cultivator and right click, you can select which one you want to place down. And like any crop, they do need to have direct access to the sunlight and also be placed relatively far away from each other. When I say far away from each other, like this distance here would be fine. You have to go crazy, but just leave some space between them is all I'm saying so that they have the room to grow. From each of these that you plant, you will get three back, meaning you profit by two each time that you plant one of these. And the Yotam Puffs and Mage Caps can only be grown in the Mistlands biome, not in any other biomes. There are a ton of new weapons and there's a couple new armor sets and shields and things like that in the Mistlands update. Now, I did make a full video about this and I'll link that in the video description, but let's have a look at some of the more interesting ones. So these are the two new armor sets, the Ita and the Carapace armor, and uh, the Ita one will actually improve your Ita regen. So let's take a look at that first. So basically, if you wear a full set of the Ita armor, you get plus 40 from the trousers, plus 20 from the hood, and plus 40 from the robe, totaling 100% increased Ita regen. Now, once again, I have made a full magic guide if you want to see that, but the too long didn't watch version is you eat Ita foods, which are some of the new foods in the game, such as the Yggdrasil porridge or the Seeker Aspect. This gives you Ita, which is a stat that works in the same way that stamina works, and every time you use magic, that will then use up some of your Ita, which will regenerate again, just like stamina. And by wearing a full set of the Ita armor like this right here, then you get that extra regen. So the only new cape is the feather cape, which you see right here, and this will give you minus 100% fall damage. And we're going to check that out in a second. But for the carapace armor, it's just extra armor to what you can currently get. So here we are high up in the Mistlands terrain wearing our feather cape. And if I just go ahead and jump off, you'll see we just sort of float down like this. And if you're wearing the Femris armor, you can actually float further than you can with other types of armor. And the reason for that is because the Femris armor that I'm wearing right here gives you that movement speed. But as you saw, we drop right to the ground here and literally you take zero fall damage. So it's going to be very useful for in the Mistlands biome or if you're building big projects in survival. So some of the fun weapons now, you've got the Mistwalker sword. This is pretty cool. And you can see the stats right here, but it also clears a bit of mist around you. So that's quite useful. We have this fantastic looking new hammer right here called the Demolisher. And it does a massive amount of damage and it's going to be very useful indeed. The other weapon I absolutely have to talk about is this right here, the Himen Affle. And you can see the recipe for it right there. Now this does some normal attacks, but it's really cool feature is the special attack using the middle mouse button, which does this right here. How amazing is that? We also have things like the crossbows and the different mage weapons and things like that. But again, I have made a full guide on this. This is just to introduce you to a few of the more interesting ones in today's video. Now, in terms of making all these things, the Black Forge is going to be one of your biggest friends in the game, and you can see the recipe for it right there. Incidentally, to get the Black Cores, you will need to go into the dungeons and explore them to find those Black Cores. Once you've made one, it will be used to make a lot of the new weapons and armor and tools and stuff like that that we get in the game. And this can be upgraded by the Black Forge cooler improvement, as you see right there. So just the one upgrade for the Black Forge at the moment, and that's the recipe for it. Now, the Artisan table, which unlocks when you kill Moda and get her Dragon Tears, can make the new Mechanical Spring, as well as these missiles right here. This spring is used in the recipe for the trap and also the new ballista, and the missiles that we make are also used in that ballista. So I have five of the Black Metal missiles on me here, and I have this ballista. Now, if I go ahead and press E to load this up, then you'll see that if a mob runs in front of it, the ballista will shoot at it. But as you saw right there, it will also shoot at you. Now, this is not a bug. This is intended, and so I believe it is here to stay in Valheim. So do be careful with these things and don't run in front of them when they're loaded. Just make sure you use them against the mobs. Another thing we can make at the Black Forge is the Dwerger Lantern. Now, I'm going to show you this in just a second, but pay attention to the fact that you can actually block and parry with this, and that's going to be quite useful. So the reason the Lantern can be quite useful is we can go ahead and equip that and also equip a sword at the same time. And as you'll see right here, we can then see what we're doing in dungeons, but also if we get attacked, we can use it to block and also to parry enemies. So a pretty cool lantern that you can walk around with to give you both light and a shield at the same time. The dad jokes are of course coming, but I really hope you enjoyed part one of this 100 Mistlands tips and tricks. And if you did, please do consider liking and subscribing for more. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. A friend of mine is known for sweeping girls off their feet. He's an extremely aggressive janitor. I became a very proud father today. My son actually just turned five, but he was really boring for the first four years. I recently went to the world's tiniest wind turbine exhibit.
Honestly, not a big fan. Scientists have discovered what is believed to be the world's largest bedsheet. More on this story as it unfolds.